Welcome everyone. Uh, this is a video for your uh, statistics chapter seven practice exam. Um, we are going to go ahead and jump into it. Uh, you can find um, a PDF version of the practice exam in Canvas. Uh, I have it in several places uh, if you'd like to see it. Um, I'm going to assume that you have that pulled up or printed out in front of you as I go through this practice exam. Problem number one says find the critical value z sub alpha over two. that corresponds to a 98% confidence level. Now I wanna make it clear, in this case, alpha is 0 0.02, making alpha over two 0 0.01, half that. And what we are looking for is this top Z number that corresponds to an area here of 0 0.01. And that, um, if you remember, our calculators only know area to the left. And I will note the area to the left here is 0 0.99. And that'll give me my corresponding Z value there. So I'm gonna go distributions, inverse norm. And this is gonna be one minus 0 0.01 because that's the area. I could just do 0 0.99, that's the same thing. And that gives us Z sub 0 0.01 is about 2.3 three, two, six, three, three, two, six, three, yes. So there is number one. Number two, it's gonna require some algebra. Uh, so we're gonna to have to think back to our intermediate algebra class. And they give us a confidence interval, 0 0.724, and 0 0.7, Seven five two, And remember, when we're talking about proportion in a confidence interval, this is going to be p hat minus e. And then p hat plus e. And what that does for us is it, it's going to give us a system of equations. So that is equal to that. And that is equal to that. And you can see that I can actually use the elimination method by adding these two up. And I'm going to notice that the E's cancel out, even though we're looking for E, but we'll come back to that. So when I add this up, I get 2p hat equals 0.724 plus 0 0.752, 1.476. And to solve that, I'm going to divide both sides by 2. So divide by 2. So p hat is going to be 0 0.738. Now, once again, I'm looking for E. So I'm going to actually plug this value into there. So 0 0.738 plus E equals 0 0.752. So then I'm going to get 0.752 minus 
0.738. And that is going to be my error. There you have it. Moving on to number three. And let me adjust this. So we are uh, finding the margin of error uh, with the information that we have. And the formula, in case you forgot, the proportion, um, you can find this in the my math lab. Um, it's one of the, uh, the tabs on the side that says tables and formula. Um, and it's gonna be this one here. This is uh, the formula I'm gonna use to find this error that they're asking for for problem number three. And the formula looks like this. Uh, P hat is a sample proportion. Q hat is the uh, the uh, complement. Uh, so it's going to be one minus P hat. So let's start here. They give us a P hat. Now, in this case, they give us is x over n. And in this case, they have that x is 129 and n is 192. This means q hat is 1 minus 129 over 192. Getting a common denominator. One ninety two minus one twenty nine sixty three over one ninety two. So I have two of my elements. I have that n is one ninety two. There's three of my elements that I'm going to use. So I'm going to use this here, that there. I'm going to use that there. I'm going to use that there. Also going to need to find z sub alpha over two. Now they give us that the um, the sea level is ninety five percent or 0.95. This means that alpha is 0 0.05, and alpha over two is zero point zero two five. All I'm doing with that is I'm cutting 0 0.05 in half. That's where I'm getting that value from. Let me put something just a little bit more. All right, so the z value corresponding to this is going to be inverse norm. It's going to be one minus again because our z sub alpha over two is always the right side one. So it's going to be one minus. 0 0.025, and this is going to be familiar for us, 1.96. So z sub 0 0.025 is about 1.96. So I now have my four unknowns, and I'm going to use the formula to calculate E. So 1.96 times the square root of 129 over 192, 63 over 192, all over 192. Now I'm going to do this in pieces. So please watch how I, I use my calculator here. Of course, this is outside the radical, so this is going to be the last thing I'm going to multiply here. I'm going to start here, 129 divided by 192 times, and I'm use parentheses, 63 divided by 192 equals divided by 192. Now I broke it up like that on purpose. If you try to type everything in all at once, there's a pretty good chance you'll, you'll get something not quite right. So now I need to take the square root of that. That's all this inside here. 
And I want to point out that down here at the bottom, you can barely see it. It says answer. And I need the blue button to acknowledge that. So I'm going to hit the square root. And I want the square root of the previous answer. So I'm going to hit second and answer. And so that'll take the square root of the previous answer there. There it is. And then times 1.96. Now you'll probably want to practice that. Uh, a couple of times actually. Even practice it incorrectly so you can kind of see where things go wrong. So our error that we're looking for is 0 0.0664. All right, moving on to number four. Let's push that up a little bit. Number four it says, uh, given the degree of confidence and sample that you construct a confidence interval for the population proportion P. So we have of 380. So that's my N. So let's write this out. So number four. So N equals 380. X is 21. Uh, said they plan on working in a rural community. Find a 95% confidence interval for the true proportion of all medical students who plan to work in a rural community. So our C level is 0.95. And very nicely, it is all built in. So I'm going to go to stat. I'm going to go to tests. And this is a one proportion one proportion Z interval. So it's A on my calculator, maybe different on yours. I'm gonna enter that. X in this case is 21. And in this case is 380. C level is 0.95. Look at that, done. <laughs> Super cool. So let's write it out. And if you could, on, a, on the test, if you could just put one prop Z interval, just so I know what you put in your calculator um, that, that uh, in case you did something else. Uh, so number five is very, very similar. Squeeze that down here, number five. N is 150. X is 30 and our C level is 0.99. So once again, I'm gonna go stat, tests. I'm gonna go down to a one proportion Z interval. X is 30 and is 150. Confidence level is 0.99. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> Super cool. So our answer, I should have said this is our answer for the previous one. This answer is 0 0.11587, 0 0.28413. Moving on, our next one, number six. Um, this one's a little confusing. A newspaper article about the results of a, of a poll states, in theory, the results of such a poll in 99 cases out of 100 should differ by no more than five percentage points in either direction from what would have been obtained by interviewing all voters in the United States. Find the sample size suggested by the statement. So to be clear, that whole quote that you see there, all that is saying is that the C level is 0 0.99, 99 out of 100. That's all that that's saying. The error is to be 0 0.05. 
and that, oh, our, which means alpha is 0 0.01, which means alpha over two is 0 0.005. Be really careful with that, that you have the two zeros in, um, after the decimal. And the formula that we're gonna be using, we don't, so we have two formulas to find this. This is back to that same sheet I just showed you before. One of them is if we have information about it, which we don't, a sample proportion, which we don't have. Otherwise we use the 0.25. So I'm gonna actually use this one. So I'm gonna get the alpha, uh, uh, Z sub alpha over two first, and then we'll put it in the formula. So again, this is area to the right. So I need the area to the left. So Z sub 0 0.005 is going to be distribution inverse norm. 1 minus 0 0.005. This is going to be about, I'm going to go to four decimal places, 2.5758. And our formula is here. So N is Z sub, in this case, 0 0.005 squared times 0.25. And if you look at my lecture notes, I explain where the point two five comes from. We want to overestimate it over uh, e squared. So putting it all together, two point five seven five eight squared times point two five divided by zero point zero five squared. And I'm going to go, uh, since I have that number there and I got all of it, I'll go ahead and square it. Square times 0.25 divided by 0 0.05 squared. So this is going to give me about 663.5. And if you remember in the lecture notes, we always round up. We, we want to overestimate what we need, not underestimate. So the answer is 664. And this is, let me say what it is, that's okay. All right, be careful with your calculator, of course. Number seven, seven, eight, nine, I'm gonna kind of do together. Um, so what we need to do for number seven is notice that it gives us a sea level of 0.98, which implies alpha is 0 0.02, which means alpha over two is 0 0.01. It gives us that N is seven, and it gives us a known population standard deviation. This tells us right away that of the options, we're gonna be finding Z sub alpha over two because the population standard deviation is known. So Z sub 0 0.01 is going to be once again, distribution inverse norm, one minus one zero is the same as 0 0.01. That's gonna bother some people. I can see the emails, so I'll delete that one part. So 2.3263. Now, again, that's because this is known. My population standard deviation. Make sure I'm not running off the page there. I'm not. Although I'm going to scoot that. Now, eight, it says specifically that sigma is not known. So our C level. 0 0.99, which means alpha is 0 0.01, which means alpha over two is 0 0.005. And sigma is not known. Um, it gets a little tricky sometimes in um, some of the work problems, they say that the standard deviation is something, but they're talking about the sample standard deviation, not the population standard deviation. So make sure that you read it carefully. 
And it appears to be normally distributed. So this is going to be a T sub 0 0.005. Now, to do a T distribution, we need N. And N in this case is 17, which means our degrees of freedom is 16. So I'm going to go to, uh, once again, this is area to the right. And our calculator only knows area to the left, so distribution. Uh, inverse T in this case. Now, some of your calculators, um, TI-83s, um, are not going to have the inverse T, and I'll show you what we're going to do about that here in just a second. So the area again, this is 1 minus 0 0.005. Degrees of freedom is here. And this one is an actual subroutine that it's running. All right, 2.9208, if I round it off. And if you don't have inverse T, then what you can do is you can go to a T distribution, like we see here. And once again, let's push that up, up too far. Um, area in one tail is going to be 0 0.005. And in both tails, it's going to be 0 0.01. That's, that's the alpha and alpha over two. Degrees of freedom of 16. And you can see 16. You can see 2.92 and that it run it off to here would be just to the one. So this is if you don't have the inverse T in your calculator, this is what you would do. Um, again, this is all part of that same um, tab in Canvas or in, um, I can put it in Canvas too. Maybe I'll do that, uh, but it's in my math lab. All right, number nine is super easy. Because it's not normally distributed, we can't do anything with it. So it says it's, it's skewed. So neither the normal nor the T, sometimes called the Pearson T distribution applies. All right, so number 10. And again, for number nine, neither applies in this case because it's not normally distributed. It appears skewed. So we, we can apply a Z or a T distribution to that. So number 10, 30 randomly selected students, so N equals 30, took the calculus final. If the sample mean, sample mean is X bar, is 95, and the standard, now it says standard deviation, but this is the sample standard deviation. This is not sigma, is 6.6. .6. This tells me right away, and they give us no information about the population standard deviation. Sea uh, level is 0 0.99. So this is gonna be a T interval because we don't have any information on the population standard deviation. Very nicely, the calculator also does this. So we go to uh, stat, tests, and we go down to a T interval. And we need it on stats. So X bar, they give us 95. Oop, I quit out of it. Here. Stat, T interval. X bar is 95. Uh, the uh, sample standard deviation is 6.6. .6. N is 30. And the compass level is 0.99. You gotta love the technology. It's beautiful. So for our mean, 91.679. Ninety-eight point three two one. Now, as you're watching this video, you should be pausing this and using your own calculator to actually come up and getting the same numbers that I'm getting um, for all of these problems. Each of these should that should work well. All right, number eleven. Number eleven is a little different. This actually gives us data. So we're gonna do the exact same thing. I want to find this. 
And um, this is going to be a T as well. They give us no information about the uh, population standard deviation. What I've done is I've already preloaded the data into list one for me. So if you want to pause it and put yours in, that's fine. Uh, but I'm just going to move forward. So for this one, this is going to be a T distribution. So stat tests T interval. And this time I'm going to use the data that I put in list one. Now, if it doesn't say L1 there, remember all you have to do is hit above the one, there's an L1. So a second, go down, second L1. If it's missing, uh, frequency is just one, that's fine. The confidence level is 0.9. What's happening? No. So 0.9. Ah, it's beautiful. So in this case, 79.586 and 86.88. That's it. There's really no other work to do. Uh, you just have to put the, the data into the list one and that'll work it out. Number 12, uh, minimum sample size. So it says how many business uh, students must be randomly selected to estimate a mean monthly earnings of business students at one college. We want a 95. Okay, so let's write this up. So, so the C level is a 0.95. Sample mean X bar is one. I'm sorry, that's not X bar. This is our error is the 135. And this is important that we, the population standard deviation is known. So we have Sigma and it is 538. And the formula that we're going to be using is right here. And you can see we need sigma. We can't do this with a sample uh, because uh, that means it's a T distribution. We, we need to know N because we need the degrees of freedom. So I'm going to put all that together. So N equals Z sub alpha over two times sigma all over E. And the whole thing is squared. And let's find Z sub alpha over two. So if the C level is 95%, that means alpha is 0 0.05, which means alpha over two is 0 0.025. And uh, again, it's a Z, so I can actually use inverse norm. One minus 0 Z sub 0 0.025 is about 1.96. So plugging all that in, 1.96 times 538 divided by 135. The whole thing is squared. Actually, I can just use the previous answer, second answer times 538, 538 divided by 135, and then square it. So it's about 61.0089. And even though it's closer to 61, we, again, we have to always round up. 62, uh, this is students. On to number 13. How many commuters must we randomly select to estimate the mean driving time of Chicago commuters? We want a 95 star C level. This is number 13. 
our sea level is 0.9. And let's just kind of run this through. So this is um, means alpha is 0.1, which means alpha over two is 0 0.05. And our error in this case is four minutes. And the population center deviation has to be known. In this case, it's 12 minutes. So I'm gonna use the exact same formula I used before. Um, let's get our Z sub 0 0.05. Oops, too many zeros. So n is going to be 1.6449 times 12. This is all one big thing over four and the whole thing is squared. So we take the previous answer times 12 times 12 divided by four and square the whole thing. Yeah, we're good. 24.35, which again, we round up to 25 commuters. Commuters. All right, next up. So we're gonna come up with a um, confidence interval uh, for number 14, a random sample of 104 light bulbs. Let's write this out, 14. N equals 104, X bar is 543. And you can see the way they wrote this, they actually wrote in sigma. Uh, so when they write in sigma, that means that uh, that signals that they know the population standard deviation, which in this case is the 26. And the sea level is going to be 0.9, which means alpha is 0.1, alpha over 2 is 0 0.05. So this means we're going to be using a Z. I actually can use this right here. When it's T, I can't copy it because degrees of freedom are probably different. So that's going to change it. But with Z, it's, this is always going to be this. And we want a confidence interval. This is going to be a, a Z interval. So I'm going to go to stat tests. And this is a Z interval. And you can see the first thing they want is the population standard deviation. It's 26. <laughs> Must be hitting something not quite right. Oh, I know what it is. Uh, 26. Oh, and I need to be in stats. X bar is 543. N is 104. And our C level, oh, we didn't even need to find the Z. It does everything for us, I forgot. <laughs> Super cool. There it is, done. So we didn't need to do all that. <laughs> we just needed the sea level. All right, number 15 is gonna be very similar. And again, I wanna make it clear for number 15 that they tell us specifically that sigma is 19. So the population stem deviation is known in this case. So N in this case is 82 chicken eggs found that the mean amount of cholesterol, 228, 
with a sigma of 19 and our sea level 0 0.95 and that is all we need. So we're going to go to stat. Yeah. Tests. Again, it's we know it's Z and not T because sigma is known. The population standard deviation is known. So 19, 228, 82, 0.95. You gotta love it. So cool. I know I keep saying it, but it's so cool. Now we're to a chi-square distribution for the last five. All right, let's move that. All right, 16. So for this, we will need this table, a chi-square distribution. And the big thing here is area to the right. So they want to find chi squared, the right one, with a sample size n equals six, which means our degrees of freedom is five, it's always one less. And the confidence level is 0.95. And I'm trying to remember how they, yeah. So this means alpha is 0 0.05, which means alpha over two is 0 0.025. And I'm gonna draw kind of what we're looking for here. What's different about a chi-squared is it starts at zero versus the T or the Z distribution that we've had so far, they go from negative infinity to infinity. The chi-squared starts at zero. And it has an unusual shape. It's skewed right. And we end up with two critical values. And I'm going to over exaggerate this. This one is my chi squared left that has 0 0.025. Zero point zero two five. And this is my chi squared right. And this one specifically wants this right one. So the table that I have, and remember the degrees of freedom are five in this case. The amount of area to the right, and you'll see right here, it says to the right of the critical value. And so the degrees of freedom in this case are five, but the area to the right is 0 0.025. So degrees of freedom are 5.025, I am right here, 12.833. And we could find the one to the left, but that actually is uh, number 17 that gets, does that for us. Number 17. Chi squared left. We have n is 24, which again makes our degrees of freedom 23. And our sea level again is 0.95. Oops, equals, and then alpha over 2, sorry, is 0 0.025. This is going to be very similar. However, the degrees of freedom are different. So it's not going to correspond at all with this here. I draw the picture every time. It's really hard uh, to visualize without doing that. All right, so again, zero, this is chi squared. Yep. 
Again, I'm over-exaggerating this on purpose. Here's my chi-squared left. Now here's the thing. If 0 0.025 is here, how much area is to the right? Well, it's gonna be the, exactly the complement of that. So it's gonna be one minus 0 0.025. So 0.975 with the degrees of freedom of 23. So let's find that. Degrees of freedom are 23, we're here. And to the right is the 0 0.975. 0 0.975, so 11.689. All that right. 11.689, yeah. And you should be double checking me, of course. All right, we will need more of that for this next one as well. Uh, and good news, uh, number 20 doesn't apply. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not gonna go through that. Uh, so we just have two more. And both of them are going to use our chi-squared table as well as these formulas right here. Now, I wanna make it clear, this is for variance. Um, so we are going to need, so once again, these here, this is for variance. So I actually need to take the square root of each of these as I do that. Um, there isn't a fun little test built into this, uh, into the calculator here, unfortunately. Um, so we're going to have to use uh, what we have. So for number 18, I want to write down the pertinent information and let me make sure we are. Yep. I mean, I'm going to fit 18 and 19 here, but we'll see. So for 18, I have uh, 18. I have n equals 20 uh, x bar is 10.9, which I don't think I need for this formula. I do not. 10.9. Standard deviation. This is the uh, sample standard deviation, 2.7. And sea level is 0.99. All right, so I need both chi-squared left and chi-squared right. So I'll just make it clear. So this means alpha is 0 0.01, alpha over two is 0 0.005. That's two zeros, be careful. And this is gonna give me my Chi squared left. This is going to be my chi squared right. And I will need both of those, as you can see in the formula. I'm using both. So uh, n is 20, which of course means the degrees of freedom is 19. Now, for this one, the area to the right is going to be 1 minus 0 0.005. That is 1 minus 0 0.005 is 0.995. So all this area here is 0.995. So here we go. Degrees of freedom, 19. 19. It's here. And 0.995 is right there. 6.844. Six point eight four four. Can we confirm that? Yeah. Now, area to the right here is point zero zero five. Nineteen. Right. So nineteen point zero zero five is all the way at the end here. That is thirty eight point five eight two. Thirty eight point five eight two. 
And the formula, definitely not fit 19 out here. I'm not even sure I'll be able to finish 18. It's going to be here. Square root of n minus 1, which is just 19. I'll write it out. n minus 1 uh, times s squared. That's s squared over chi squared right. Now I know this one is chi squared right and it's on the left. It's exactly the opposite of, of sort of an intuitive way of doing it. Okay, so 19 times 2.7 squared over, this is all radical, 38.582. That is barely going to fit. All right, so I'm going to do the square root. 19 times 2.7 squared divided by, now you may need to be careful with your parentheses. You may not, uh, you may have to use extra parentheses. My radical goes with me. Uh, some of the older ones, not so much. So you may have to be extra careful. 38.582. There it is 1.89. The other one is going to be the square root of 19 times 2.7 squared divided by 6.844. So about 4.5. So there's our confidence interval. Ooh, it barely fit. I didn't leave that on the screen long enough. Let me just make sure I get a good picture of that. Now, the last one, the very similar to the one we just did, just different numbers, number 19. All right, so 19, sociologist develops a test to measure altitudes um, about, attitudes, pardon me, about public transportation, 27, and it's 27, which means degrees of freedom, it's 26. Uh, our subjects are given the test. Their mean score, x bar, which I don't need, 76.2. And the sample standard deviation is 21.4. Our sea level is 0.95, means alpha is 0 0.05. Alpha over 2 is 0 0.025. Over exaggerate a little bit. Degrees of freedom is 26. Now, area to the right here is going to be 1 minus 0.025. So 0 0.975. So degrees of freedom again was 26, which is way down here, way down there. And oh, that fits. Okay. And 0.975. So there we are. 26, yes. 
And now the area to the right here is 0 0.025. So once again, we are at 26 degrees of freedom. And we are here, 0 0.025. Let's do that. 41.923. All right. Let's use our formula. Same one we used just a minute ago. And we're doing okay in space. So n minus one is 26. Here's 41.923. Thirteen point eight four four. Now it comes down to the machine. So square root twenty six times twenty one point four squared divided by forty one point nine two three. Right, so this gives us 16 point, we'll say 8.5. Last part, square root 26 times 21.4 squared divided by 13.844. It's 29.33. And that is practice test for chapter seven. Take care.